welcome to France 24's Tech Show. I'm Julia Seeger. Artificial intelligence is increasingly used for surveillance purposes, but it can also do good for mankind and help solve society's biggest challenges. We'll speak to Istvan Rushka from the AI for, Fa for Good Foundation. And tune in to Test 24 this week as we try the High Vibe guitar. The smart acoustic instrument uses smart vibration technology and doubles up as a Bluetooth speaker. But first, Chinese authorities have begun deploying new surveillance tool. It's called Gate Recognition Software, and it uses people's body shapes and how they walk to identify them, even when their faces are hidden from cameras. Laurent Bersecher picks up the story. Identifying someone by the way they move. The system, known as Gate Recognition, is China's latest innovation in the field of AI-driven surveillance technology. Body traits include more than 600 muscles, over 200 bones, and the nervous system. All of them combined make up what we call one's gait. Gait analysis cannot be fooled by simply limping, walking differently, or bowing, because we're analyzing the features of the entire body. The system's creators claim it can identify people up to 50 feet away, even if their backs are turned or their face covered. This gives gate recognition the edge over face scanning technology, which requires close-up, high-resolution images to function. But with over 100 million surveillance cameras already installed across China, according to estimates, residents are beginning to worry about their privacy. It's fine if the technology is applied to security and protection by the police. But regarding commercial use, if any company captures data from their clients, I think they would run a high risk of having that private information leaked. This technology is awful. Look how many cameras we already have. Gate recognition is part of a broader push by Beijing to become a global leader in surveillance technology and to assert more social control over the population. The use of biometric recognition to ensure social stability and strength in social management is an unstoppable trend. It's absurd. People are spending money to install cameras in order to survey themselves. China recently announced plans to rank all of its 1.4 billion citizens according to a social credit system, which would see people lose points for bad behavior, such as jaywalking, and be rewarded or punished depending on their total scores. The measure, which authorities hope will come into force by 2020, already has privacy advocates up in arms, but it will certainly provide a golden opportunity for gate recognition technology to shine. And one can understand why this AI and data-driven surveillance is raising privacy concerns, but artificial intelligence is also increasingly used to help make this world a better place. Two years ago, the UN, for instance, created a platform for dialogue around how machine learning and AI can be applied to solve some of society's biggest challenges, like poverty, unemployment, and conservation. Well, I'm now joined by Esteban Rushka, a professor of artificial intelligence at Carnegie Mellon University and Sao Carlos in Brazil. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Uh, you are also the founding member of the AI for Good Foundation Steering Committee. Tell us more about this foundation and why it was created. Hi, Julia. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, after many, many, many meetings, we as a research community that are working with this decided that we need to do more than just advancing the models and, and algorithms that are behind the are behind artificial intelligence. And this doing more means uh, being also worried and putting uh, more efforts on trying to make it as a science more transparent, uh, making it giving a feedback that is more concrete to our society and making it a research area that can really have the full impact that uh, can provide better lives to our human beings. And what are some of the best examples of how AI can help advance the UN's global sustainable agenda? Thank you so very much for asking this. So we are connected to the United Nations and we act trying to provide ways so that we can advance in the goals that the United Nations define as what uh, would be important for us. Um, in that sense, we take 
all the 17 different topics and we work together with academia and industry and uh, our foundation bridging the gap between those entities and providing ways so that artificial intelligence can be applied to solve or helping advancing in the solutions for problems related to those. So one very quick example is we are working together with Berkeley University, putting data so that artificial intelligence models can try to detect how can we prevent or how can we help to filter uh, plastic from the oceans and making uh, ocean life protection easier. And what do you say to people who worry about the advancement of AI? I say that this is not a surprise that people might be worried about this because AI is a very new topic, but there is no reason to be so alarmed. Uh, we as a community and we uh, from academia and from research uh, in the AI area know that uh, the impact that we can have is really big, but this impact is going going to be for good and not actually something that would destroy our lives or something that would come and take over all our jobs here. Esteban Rushka from the AI for Good Foundation, thank you for that. And it's time to turn to our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. You're going to tell us more about other great examples of AI for good and tell us how tech giants are also actively involved. Well, uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or the NOAA, has been monitoring whale populations in the U.S. Pacific waters. Now, in order to do that, they have set up uh, high-frequency audio recorders at 12 different sites. And some of these sites have been active since 2005. So as you can imagine, they have accumulated a huge database of these audio recordings amounting to almost 170,000 hours. Now, in order to sort out those recordings, Google has teamed up with uh, NOAA and uh, it has trained a deep neural network that automatically identifies which of these recordings correspond to sounds of whales. And that's how uh, it's possible to monitor the populations over a period of time in a much easier way. And let's take a minute to uh, listen to the song of the whales. <laughs> Sounds like a bear. <laughs> but anyhow, this, uh, so it is an example of AI for conservation, but what about for health? Well, two students from the University of Ontario, they recently won a, a prize at the Microsoft Imagine Cup competition. In fact, they won the top prize for this uh, prosthetic bionic hand. It's called Smart Arm. Uh, they use machine learning uh, in this uh, device. So as you can see, there's a camera uh, placed here. And at the bottom, there's a computer. So the camera identifies the object that is to be grasped. And the computer then determines the kind of strength uh, that is required to either lift the object or just to hold it. Now, there's another component in the form of a muscle sensor. So you put on this sensor. And as you approach that object wearing this uh, uh, prosthetic uh, arm, uh, the muscles, they instinctively they flex. And this is then de uh, detected by the sensor and the signal is sent through Bluetooth to the computer to, uh, to determine the exact timing of the, of the grip. So it tells you when to hold that object. And last but not least, you have an app for newborns. Absolutely. It's called Ubenwa and it has been developed by Nigerian innovators. Now, the idea behind this app is to make a quick diagnosis of uh, asphyxia in uh, newly borns. Now, uh, asphyxia has been uh, is, is considered as one of the top three causes for infant deaths. So they also use uh, machine learning and by using the infant cry as an input, they are able to diagnose if, uh, uh, if this is a case of child asphyxia and this diagnosis is really, really quick. It's almost um, within 10 seconds. So right, it can help save many babies. Many lives. Thank you for that, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test24. And this week on Test24, we're taking a closer look at the High Vibe guitar. It's not just any guitar. It uses smart vibration technology to turn itself into a Bluetooth speaker. Dan, tell us more about it. Well, Julia, I'm joined by Adria Mamumani, who is the founder of High Vibe and the inventor of this guitar. 
Now this guitar looks very normal from the surface, but there's a lot going on inside. And at the heart of it are three components. One is the transducer, second is the piezoelectric film, and third is the computer. Now when you strum this guitar, the vibrations are sent uh, to this piezoelectric film, which vibrates and turns it into an electrical signal. The electrical signal is sent to the computer, which is then amplified and then sent back to the two transducers, which are located underneath the top plate, which essentially functions as a speaker. And that's why, because of this uh, smart algorithm and smart flow, you get this pure, focused and really sharp sound. Now, I am not a very good guitar, not forget very good, I'm not a, a guitar, good player, guitar at player I'm not a guitar player. So I'm going to let uh, Adrien do the honors and end this show with a beautiful melody. Okay. So that's true that it looks like a normal dreadnought uh, uh, guitar. But if you look carefully, you see the high vibe system on it. And you have several features that you never have in a usual acoustic guitar like that. So for instance, if you go to the effect menu, you have your normal sound. And you can add a bit of reverb. But I'm most impressed by the looper. You have to play okay. that and we'll end the show now. OK, OK. <laughs> so you have the normal effect, but that's true that you also have a looper. So you can record yourself and play it back. brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24 and Adrian is going to keep on actually he's not playing anymore <laughs> the guitar is playing by thing. itself thanks